Hello, welcome to Access. My name is Rob. Joining us today is Rosie. Hello, everyone. Rosie, fresh from having played Concord on PS5, which we saw a trailer for at the most recent State of Play. But now you've played it, Rosie, I am eager to hear just what it feels like to play. Like, what what did you get to grips with? What characters did you play as? What modes did you get to choose? So, um, Concord is a 5v5 first-person shooter. So when I went to this event, I don't usually play, like, the competitive first-person shooters. So I thought, oh, this is going to be very interesting. Same here, Rosie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I had a really, really good time with it. Um, so we played three different modes, uh, as in, like, different game styles mm -hmm. and things, on three different maps. So we played Free Water, Star Chamber, and Water. Water hazard and we played with 10 different characters okay so we had lots to experiment with lots to play around with so um to start off with we played oh let's go over the characters because i think from the state of play we've all seen that this is we've got the vignettes for example which yeah. shows the relationship between characters and they really are like a core part of the story for mm -hmm. this game they've all got their own backstories and their own reasons for joining the crew and going on this big adventure so each character has their own abilities their own sort of uniqueness elements to them uh, for example some of them have two weapons some of them have one weapon some of them can do triple jumps double jumps single jumps i'm just talking about jumping at the moment uh hover in the sky uh so they've all got their very unique abilities that are to them so we played as uh, lennox who had a revolver and a handgun and they had two abilities so you could throw a knife which exploded on impact and they had self-healing and i actually really liked playing as lennox lennox was one of the main that i played as when i was going around yeah uh, you also had Haymar, who I like to call them the, the gliding fire lady because they can, right. when they jump, rather than having a double jump, you can jump and then hover for a bit. Okay. And uh, she has all these abilities where she evolves around like fire. So she can just spread a wall of fire, which can do big damage and things like that. And because she's hovering and in the air a lot, one thing I did really like about Concord is that not only do you have to consider the battlefield horizontally, but also vertically. Yeah. So uh, Haymar is an example where when I was running around, I think, hang on, I'm getting shot out from somewhere. What's going on? And then, oh, there's Haymar just gliding around in the air. I was going to ask about that because in the trailer, it felt like, okay, this is going to be a game that has a lot of verticality to it. Yes. Did you definitely feel that while, whilst playing? I definitely felt that uh, whilst playing. And there are definitely characters who some of them are very much grounded characters and then you have the other ones which are very vertical hovering right. triple jump uh having abilities that make them jump up by and then slam back down so making sure you pick a team of five that has a good mix of yeah grounded and people who can hover about in the air <laughs> but not only that when you are also fighting them as well there's so many moments where like i said i was like i'm getting shot at and then i just see someone just in the air which it's you know you've got to get well i had to get used to it a little bit but it was a lot of fun to have that line of thinking going on yeah there was, there was Star Child, and they are the very much the character that, for example, is very grounded. So uh, he's got something known as Diamond Skin, and when he sort of, one of his abilities is to charge at the enemy, and when he charges, his Diamond Skin activates. So he's got like a whole armored sort okay. of element to him. And then when he, he can do like a really big melee ground pound, which affects an area, and his passive ability, so every character's got a passive ability, and that's just something that they automatically have but his is that when he gets a kill it refreshes all of his ability energy so that means if, if you kill someone you can immediately go charging with your diamond skin okay. again and then try and just batter them with some melee damage again but he did also have a shotgun as well if you know you're in a you're just not thinking about that and you're thinking oh shotgun please there was one off who is the big robot and i loved one off i thought one off had a really nice story to him he just he wants to clean he loves cleaning and he's learning <laughs> he's sort of like learning about the ways of life at the moment and he just loves cuddles and he loves like he's he's learning about like life. sounds like so he's in the wrong game rosie if i'm honest he wants to protect his friends so right. he's made some friends and he's going to protect them so that's why he just he's just the nicest robot i loved him but um, since he's all about cleaning with his backstory, he's got a vacuum which can hoover up some items such as some traps that are on the field and stuff. Um, and he's also got a pressure blaster if you want to do some more aggressive attacks. But when you also hoover up some items, it recharges a lot of his uh, abilities, such as he's got a throwable like trash bomb i can't fully remember what it was called but you know you throw it and it goes boom and then he's also got this trap which when he puts down on the field it will deflect projectiles and things 
And then you had Vale, who was very much your sniper kind of character. So not only could they snipe, they also had a sidearm. They could do a double jump and a vertical jump, which went really, really high and dropped trap mines. Then we had Jabali, and uh, Jabali was another one I really like playing as. Um, he's kind of like a healing guy, and he has these orbs. So he can heal everyone with these orbs. And he can also throw an orb, which fights for you. He does triple jumps, and when he shoots, he has like tracking bullets as well that will help you out a little bit so Jabali is a great one to learn the mechanics of the game and really warm you up to the experience as well as just master and then feel great I played as Roka as well and Roka was prime example of the verticality element to the game uh, Roka is all about jumping high uh, they've got an ability where they can stay in the air for a bit once they've done like a triple jump they can just stay there and they've got a big rocket launcher so if you're up in the air and you can just shoot at these rocket launchers do really big damage and again because you're in the air you can just be running around suddenly huge explosion and oh well there's Roka up there so I found that they were a lot of fun to play as and they also do a really cool move when they're in the air they slam down on the ground and it does big damage uh, then you had De Veers, who I like, who was basically like a chemist. So I wasn't very good with De Veers. I have to get a lot more better with them. But they have a flammable dart, and another one of their abilities is that they like release a pool of flammable liquid. So of course, if you lay the trap right down and then you throw those, will do your other ability and throw those fire darts. You're going to do some big damage. There were lots of moments where I was just running around and suddenly there was fire everywhere because I didn't realize that I was in one of the puddles. Um, so a very skilled character De Veers is but a lot of fun. Tio as well, who is very much like the speedy, quick sort of character that you can play as. So they've got a rifle and a sidearm, they can double jump, but they do a double dodge. And when they dodge, they get a bit more momentum to them. So if you like to be someone who's speedy, runs around, gets quick shots in, uh, and they've got a smoke grenade and a cluster grenade, then Tio is going to be a good one for you. I saw a lot of people playing as Tio and they were just zipping about all over the place. And then finally you had Dor, who was the medic of the team. So Dor had a rifle, they could double jump, uh, but more importantly they had like the healing pads, you know, heal your team. Mm -hmm. And then a protective dome as well. And Dor was really handy to have in your team. Lots of people kept on putting up the protective domes to work together. So yeah, it was definitely like all of them had their benefits. They were all had lots of things to consider and it was a lot of fun to play as all of them. But the three sort of types of matches we played, we played one called Trophy Hunt, which was probably my favorite. So Trophy Hunt is that when a player dies in the battlefield, they drop a trophy and you need to collect a certain amount to win. That one's a very like quick, speedy, go in there, kill all your opponents and then just collect the trophies and hope that you get enough to win at the end. Um, and this one's also known as a respawn type of game. So when you die, you immediately respawn and you can select your character in between. So every time you die, you can select a new character and then go in there as long as that character isn't already in the playing field. And then we also had a cargo run where there were no respawns. So once you died in this mode, you just have to hope that the rest of your team survive. But you can still watch and spectate. It's the type of mode where my involvement ends after about 12 seconds, <laughs> typically. <laughs> But uh, this was the fun game where you have to take an item to one of two extraction points. Mm -hmm. So I was very proud when I was one who picked up the cargo and immediately like legged it. I just yeah. thought, oh my God, I've got it, I've got it, I'm the target. And then once you've popped it down, you have to hold that spot to make sure that you are the one who gets the cargo out of the extraction point. And then we did another mode called Clash Point. And again, this one had no respawns, but this is where you had to defend a certain point on the map or just eliminate everyone in the opposing team. Yeah. And this one was... I liked the speediness and the aggressiveness of Clashpoint as well, only it had that fear of once you were gone, that's it, you were gone. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to ask about that. What the, what's the pace of the game like? Are we talking like Call of Duty frenetic here? Or when you've got modes where one death means you're out of the game, do you have the space and the room to play a little bit slower, a little bit more strategically? What does it feel like in terms of the pace of the I'd game? I'd say that completely depends on your opposing team. Right. Um, because as we were all warming up and learning the maps and learning the characters and stuff, it very much went from us all just charging in and just being aggressive with each other to a lot of people went around the outskirts of the map mm -hmm. and then they would try and sneak up behind you. I had one moment where I thought I was doing really well guarding a point and suddenly I just got attacked from behind 
behind and I, I just did not think to look behind me at all. I was so busy looking at the area. So it's a whole mixture and a whole variety and the different match types as well do speed things yeah. up as well. Especially as well when um, there are like multiple matches within a round. So when whoever wins the most matches within like a set game is the victor at the end. But no, I had a really, really good time with this game. The full game as well, uh, I'm very excited to say, we'll have 16 characters, six game modes. Um, so there was the three I mentioned, including a mode then called Takedown, Area Control and Signal Chase. And there will be 12 maps across five worlds. So I only played like a snippet of what's to come, yeah. which is very exciting. And then just quickly as well, the full game has something known as a Galactic Guide, which we can't show you today, but it's essentially like a big map where you can get all of your lore information so information okay. about the planets about the characters nice. and the full game will have loads of other more strategic elements as well such as crew builder which we briefly were shown in the presentation but it essentially looks like you pick a team um, to then take with you into multiple battles and you can use the same team members but you're going to be stacking up abilities and stuff like that so that's going to be a very strategic angle as well so there's loads and loads of more stuff to come up which is really really exciting and we don't have long to wait because there's an early access beta for those who have pre-ordered the game which is on July the 12th to the 14th uh, and there's an open beta for everyone which is on July the 18th to 21st and then the full release of Concord is on August the 23rd on PS5. That is very exciting. Very though. exciting. As someone who traditionally is terrible at first-person shooters, I've got to say my interest is definitely piqued by this. <laughs> like the characters seem like really cool as well. Mm. Like I, I, I really enjoy games where it's not just specifically class-based. Like each character is like a mix of various different abilities and skills. So yeah. I'm looking forward to, to getting to grips with it. Thanks very much, Rosie. Uh, I am very much looking forward to the game. Let us know in the comments if you're going to be getting on board with the open beta or whether you're going to be picking up the game day one. And don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you never miss out on anything from the world of PlayStation. Thanks for watching.